Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry that we picked this beautiful fall day to make you stay a little bit longer in church. When we picked it, I didn't know it was going to be up to 79 or whatever it is today. But thank you all for staying. Um, I think everybody has the packet, so you can see what our agenda looks like. We're going to look at the sample intent card spreadsheet. Then we're going to look at a preliminary budget for 2025. We have some building maintenance estimates. We have some uh, tax suggestions for how to do donations. Uh, we're going to talk just a few minutes on automatic giving online. We're going to look at the differences between giving to the church versus the TLC Foundation. We're going to look at uh, the new gifts and memorials policy that was um, put in place in 2022 and approved by the church council. We have in here some estate giving language for anyone that has an interest in getting some giving to TLC into their estate plan. And also uh, some tax benefits if you were to give a portion of your IRA to the church. So those are the 10 topics. I will try to be brief. And I would encourage if you have questions, Chip has a microphone, and he'll be coming around if anybody has a question, so that everybody can hear the question. So I think everybody has gotten a letter that had this spreadsheet in it. We're talking about the two big changes that are going to happen in 2025. The first one is that we had a large estate gift that was helping us fund the music program. We had 50,000 that we used in 2023 and 50,000 that we used in 2024. So that is gonna be gone at the end of the year. So that is $50,000 that we don't have going into 2025 for our operating budget. <clears throat> the second thing that the finance team decided was that We've been doing a separate capital campaign for, I think, since 2004 when we did the big addition. And we keep hearing rumblings that nobody's really happy about that, that we still have that. So at this point in time, I thought it might be a good time to merge the capital campaign and the operating budget into one and just do one intent card going forward. So we wanted to give an example of how in our mind that would work. So if, as you can see, we have 2024 and 2025. And so in 2024, if your general fund giving was 5,000 and you're giving to the capital campaign that began in 2022, average $3,000 per year, you would be giving the church $8,000. And I know everybody's not doing that, but I just picked numbers out of the air to show an example. So then in 2025, we would ask you to continue your current <clears throat> giving of $5,000 and to add 10% if you are able. So in this instance, that would be $500. We would ask that instead of us doing a new capital campaign in July of 2025, that you add half a year of what you normally would have given to the capital campaign into your general pledge. So in 2025, your general pledge would increase by the 10% the plus half of what you normally gave the capital campaign. So your general pledge would be 7000 And we would also ask that, if you can, you complete your pledge from the last capital campaign, which there would be six months left of, so that your total for 2025 would be 8500 in this example, which would be a $500 increase. Does that make sense, or do people have questions? Make sense? Understandable? I mean, 
I, I realize maybe not everybody can do this. And, you know, we're only asking those who can do it to do it. Good? No questions? Then we have the next document is a very preliminary, preliminary budget for 2025. Um, right now, we have not put a lot of changes into the expenses. We are more focusing right now on what we hope to receive for envelope giving. So we're showing if everybody was able to do a 10% increase, that would amount to about $54,500. And if everybody was able to continue what they normally gave the capital campaign and give a half year in their general envelope. And then I just round it up by $500 that we're hoping we see an increase in envelope giving of about 110,000. And you know, part of that normally would have gone to the capital campaign. So then the other changes on this would be that we would be paying half of the mortgage out of administration, so that number has increased. And otherwise, for right now, we've kind of left the expenses the same, but a lot is going to depend on what we see coming in on interest cards. So if we see a lot lower number, um, we're going to have to make some adjustments to expenses and our biggest expense is salaries, so it would probably, probably mean cutting some salaries of some of our staff, which right now our staff is small already, so this is gonna be a hardship for the church if we have to do that. So hoping everybody who can step up to the plate will do that so that we're able to create a balanced budget for 2025. Are there any questions? Chip's going to come to the microphone. Just for the overall, how close is the our actual expenditures to the budget for 2024? We are doing fairly well. As of September 30th, revenue and expenses, you know, should be 75% because we're three quarters of the way through or three fourths of the way through. And we were actually at about 71 point something on both revenue and expenses. So through September 30th, we're looking okay. Any other questions? Okay. The next item on the agenda was just to make everybody aware that there are quite a few building maintenance needs that Keith Olson has reported will need attention in the near future. Um, his estimated cost range was between 500,000 to 800,000 for all the different items that need to be repaired. Um, the biggest items are the parking lot needs curbing badly. Um, there's a lot of asphalt and cracks, so those need to be fixed and taken care of. The roofing, there are still roofs that are going to need replacement probably within the next five years. And we have some really bad carpeting, especially in Chappelle and that needs to be replaced. And there's a, a larger list with a lot of little items on, so I just wanted to keep everybody apprised. It's a big number. Okay, then the next sheet is talking about, oh, sorry, I forgot to ask for questions. If you the 10%, could you cover that? If you achieve the 10% you're asking for, can you cover that? Can 
We cover the the the, the five hundred to eight hundred thousand. Yes. No, no, no. We cannot. So, where do we go? Uh, I think that we all we all need some prayers, and we we hope that we have a good stewardship campaign. Um, you know, right right now we've kind of been on a fix things as we have to. You know, so I'm hoping at some point we can go beyond that and start fixing things before they break, before we have to. Um, you know, we do have a couple of things that we're looking at. We are looking at renting some space in the basement to an organization. We don't know yet if that's going to go through, but that could bring us some income in. Um, we do have one estate that has promised us some money, and we're hoping that that will come in. So we, I guess part of it, as Pastor Arthur used to say, we have to trust in the Lord and hope that other things will help us be able to do some of these building things that need to be done. It's, it's not the perfect answer, but it's what I have for you today. No, no, and I don't want to put you on the spot, and I can understand that, you know, what, what was proposed isn't going to cover right. $500,000, but what percentage of that needs to get done next year? Can, can that be covered with uh, the addition you're asking? I mean, hopefully, yes. We never know when air conditioners are going to go bad or when the roof is going to start leaking more than anybody thought it would so that we, you know, have to replace it instead of, you know, Keith has been doing some patching, but at, at some point it's going to need more than just patching. And, you know, he, he says five or less on some of this rough stuff that will need to be done. Okay. All right. So, yeah. and like, you know, the parking lot doesn't have to have to be fixed today, but at some point we may get to that point where we can't just let it go anymore. So. All right, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think you'd pay them out over like about a, a five year period or something like that. I mean, that would be ideal, you know, if circumstances allow us to do a little bit every year that we could manage it but sometimes circumstances don't work out the way we want but ideally we're you know Keith is trying to say we need to do this this year and we come up with the money to do you know what he tells us has to be done this year is our mortgage? Our mortgage is currently at just a little over 780000 So we still have 10 years off on the mortgage, and that is about 90000 a year that we're making payments on. Any other questions? Okay, the next thing on the agenda was contributions from IRAs. So if you're required to take minimum distributions from your IRA and you're over 70 and a half, you can do what is called a qualified charitable distribution that doesn't give you a tax deduction instead of you having to pick up the income from your IRA distribution you would you would not be taxed on whatever you take from your IRA and give directly to the church so it has to come you know right from your IRA to the church 
Um, QCDs are allowed up to 100,000 per year. And because the standard deduction increased in 2018, more people are finding that it's advantageous to do RMDs if they are 70 and a half. So if you have not done that and would like more information, I'm sure you can talk with your tax advisor or with whoever is handling your IRA. Uh, another good way to make donations to the church is by donating stock. If you have a appreciated stock that you've held more than one year, we have an, a broker at RBC that can receive the stock from your brokerage account, and the church would then sell the stock so that you don't pay capital gains on it and that you get the full benefit of whatever the value of that stock is instead of you selling it and paying the tax and giving the church the balance. So it is a good benefit if you have some appreciated stock out there. Any questions on either of those? Yeah, on the IRA, um, you don't have, that doesn't have to come out of your minimum distribution. You that's, can do, do any amount up to, uh, I think the uh, limit for next year is $105,000. That is correct. It does not have to be your RMD. You yeah. can take more than your RMD, and yes. yes. Thank you for pointing that out. On the RMD, my understanding is, let's just say that you have 20000 that you have out in your RMD from your IRA. Um, if you have your financial advisor or that firm, from that firm, write a check, say, for $10,000, and it goes directly to the church, that will count as part of your RMD, your 20000 But uh, you don't get a tax deduction for it. But the good news is you don't have to pay taxes on that RMD either. So frankly, if you do not need your RMD, it's a great way to give your entire RMD to whatever charitable organizations you want and pay no because you're not having to report it as income. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. That's correct. It doesn't have to be your whole RMD, and it doesn't have to be your RMD. It can be any, anything from your IRA if you're age 70 and a half. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is online giving. I want to remind you that do offer electronic giving as a way to automate your regular offering. Electronic giving offers convenience for individual members and provides much needed donation consistency for our congregation. Please consider setting up a recurring giving plan. To set up a giving schedule, you can visit our website, tlcmn.com, and click on the online given Given, giving button at the top of the page. Um, Michelle and I are looking at switching. Right now we use Vanco for our automated giving, and we're thinking about switching that over to Servant Keeper. They finally have a good program, and it's going to be about the same cost as Servant Keeper. So we're hoping to do that before the new year. Once we have that done, we have members who have offered to show people how to set this up if they don't know how to do it. And we will be posting that in the bulletin if that's something you would be interested in once we get the new program set up. Any questions on that? Uh, comment for everybody. I'm on finance committee with Nancy. 
And we see it typically during the year, the months June through July, through August, sometimes even into September, where our giving dips quite a bit. People are busy with, they're at the cab and they have kids, sports, whatever's going on. <clears throat> and some people obviously aren't here to give that might otherwise be putting you know, something into the, to the basket. Two things with that, when you do electronic giving, it's there automatically and we don't have as much of a dip and it helps us cover those expenses. It don't vary through the year that much. Our expenses are still what they are. But secondly, <clears throat> you don't end up with trying to catch up on two or three months worth of giving because you're at the cabin all summer and now you gotta write a big check instead of a little check. So, and one last plug, the Servant Keeper or Vanco, either of those options are good. Personally, what I've done is through Bank of America, where I, we bank, we have automatic payment set up. So first of the month payment goes out just like mortgage, just like utilities, everything else. And A, I don't have, we don't have to worry about, oh, I missed a month or I missed a week. And second of all, it helps the church out as well on cash flow. So it is a big deal. To the extent that you can do that, it really helps. Thank you, Chair. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to talk about the difference between giving to Transfiguration or giving to our TLC Foundation. Gifts given directly to the church can be designated for a specific purpose or undesignated. Unde undesignated gifts are preferred at the church council because they can then decide how the money shall be used and where it is most needed. Direct gifts to the church are able to be used immediately and at the current time, that is exactly what we need as we are struggling to create a balanced budget for 2025. Gifts given to the TLC Foundation. The amount of the gift is retained by the foundation and each year a percentage of the income can be used for grants for items needed by the church and for the miss missions of the church. The current article corporation do not allow for grants to be used for current operating expenses. The foundation articles were written in 1991. At that time, TLC was much larger than it is now. We were having three services. We had a lot more members. And I can understand why the foundation would believe that it would never be necessary to use foundation grants to help fund the operating budget. I think we can all look around and see we now have one service. And I believe it would be very helpful. I mean, this is not something like we would build up our budget so that we have to take money or ask for money for operations, but it's starting to become a necessity that we need to look at all of our sources to help us have great programs here, great music, a youth minister, a pastoral care minister part-time, these are the things that we need. It's, it is not like we're you know, trying to become a super church. We're trying to become a good church with good programs. And I believe that we all need to work together so that we can make that happen. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for getting on my soapbox, but I've been, I've been doing this job for four years and I have so much tried to get the ELC and the foundation to work together with us so that we can be the place that we want to be and not have to keep paring down our staff so that the people that are here working have to work so much harder, it, it doesn't seem fair to me. So. It's just a topic that hits me wrong that we can't all work together and try to, to do what's best for the church. Okay. 
Um, I've also included in the packet, yes. How much money is in the foundation currently? Um, there are a couple people from the foundation here that could probably tell you. I don't get monthly or quarterly statements from them, so uh, Jay or Niall, would you like to speak to how much money the foundation has right now? Uh, right now, we have about 400000 and we do have uh, uh, a gift coming in that hasn't been cleared yet. Any other questions on the foundation? Okay. So the next document that I've included, just to make it transparent, because I'm not sure it ever got published, but in January of 2022, uh, the Church Council did approve a gifts and memorial policy. So I think everybody can probably read through it, but I think one of the main things that I would like to point out is it is really helpful to receive undesignated gifts because then the Church Council can look at where do we really need this money the most. Um, when I came on, there was about 50 different categories with little different gifts and memorials and, and how people wanted to spend it. And so a lot of the money was just sitting there because there wasn't enough to do what the people wanted to do with the money. Um, we did take some and combine some of those accounts. But it, it is very helpful if it can be undesignated, but if you really want to make it designated, on the second page of the Gifts and Memorial Policy, we do have like seven more generic categories, like give it to the general fund, give it for building and property, give it for youth and family ministry, give it for education, give it for mission and benevolence, give it for care ministry, or give it for worship and music. You know, this would allow us to do a lot more than if you say, I want it to be for choir chairs, or, you know, I want it to be for something really specific, but we don't get enough money to do the whole you know, to buy all the choir chairs, so it kind of just sits there. And another thing that we did to this policy that wasn't there before is that we added an exception so that if money comes in for a specific purpose that's not feasible because, for instance, we don't get enough money to do the complete item, like buy all the choir chairs, um, we have now given the church council the authority to redirect gifts if it's something that is not feasible at this time. So just so everybody knows that, we do have that in the gift policy right now. Any questions? And then the last page is just a couple of different ways that people could give estate gifts. There's some language for giving bequests to the church. There's also a suggestion that if you have a desire to have the church you know, receive some of your estate, that probably one of the best ways to do that is to name the church as a partial beneficiary of your IRA. Because if your children would receive that money, they would end up paying tax on it. But if the church receives it, we can receive it tax-free because we're a tax-exempt organization. So if, if you do have intentions to give the church some money when you pass away, this is one of the better ways to do it. And then lastly, 
I have listed the name of our ELCA regional gift planner. She did come and do a presentation. Uh, not very many folks attended. But she did offer that anybody like to have some free consulting. She ha does have some very good ideas for different ways to get money to the church. So I've listed her phone number if anybody's interested. Okay, I'm sorry that I have been so excited here today, <laughs> but I just want, <clears throat> want to make things work. Um, this morning, I just wrote some of the things I like about Transfiguration. I think the people here are very caring, very good people, very kind people, very faithful people, very hopeful people, very loving, very nurturing. Many people are very selfless. Many of you have been very generous. And I believe that TLC is a very resilient church. We've been through a lot together, especially in the last four to five years. And I think things are feeling a lot better around here, the morale and people getting along. And I'm happy to be a member here. And I'm doing my best to make us be able to survive and have a balanced budget. And I thank all of you for your generosity. I'll be so brief. There are still donuts and treats available. I know um, sugar is a multi covers over a multitude. Love and sugar cover over a multitude of sin. Um, I want to just add my thanks to the finance team. They work hard all year long to spin our dollars into gold <laughs> that gets used in very faithful ways. The church is changing, and that's true. I want you all to know, though, that I'm a North Dakota girl. I'm not scared of anything. Little deficit, who cares? Okay? <laughs> we are, I love this church. I'm here to stay. We're here to work. I believe in us. This, as Nancy said, this, the, this whole place is filled with people of faith. In the ELC, in the foundation, in this congregation, we all want to see a thriving community. We are hard at work on on rebuilding relationship, especially with the ELC, so that it is healthy and good and, and mutually joy-filled and beneficial. So just know the council is going to continue uh, the tradition of having a cooperative committee where we will go through all of our points of concern and address them. So no stone will be left unturned and nothing's off the table as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm also, because I'm from North Dakota, I'm very, very frugal. So I want you to know I'm not a spender. I don't just give on a whim to whatever. Dollars are not going to just be given like we have endless <laughs> amounts of resources, because obviously we don't. But we are going to be faithful with the resources that we do receive and the resources that we do have and are given. So I just want you to know, Nancy, we owe you so much, and we thank you for your hard work. And the guys that work with you, yep. <laughs> Bob and Michael. Um, so thank you. Thank you for sticking around. If you do concerns and questions, you can always find me. You can always reach out to our finance team. Thank you for staying.